So today I would like to tell you about the differences between the Logitech G13 Advanced Keyboard and the Razer Nostromo. If you're looking for an additional keypad which differs from the main keyboard because you think the keyboard is stupid or you've always wanted something like that, there's actually only two devices from well-known manufacturers. Here, the Logitech G13 or the Razer Nostromo. Well, they're quite similar, but at the same time, there are huge differences. As you can see, the Razer looks like typical gaming hardware, sort of science fiction-like, with a side pad for your thumb. The Logitech is less special, sort of, but looks better in a normal PC working environment and doesn't have that sort of obvious ergonomics. There are some basic ergonomic elements, as it's slightly convex here, but only slightly. The razor, on the other hand, is truly convex. It really follows the natural shape of your hand. Well, prices are basically the same, just about 10 euro difference. This one 60, this one 70 euro. So this is actually a factor which can be ignored. So gaming, as you know, is hard work. When you're under pressure, you really hit the buttons hard. So the pad should really be stable and solid on the table. Therefore, the stability is an important parameter. The first thing that I read about the Razer was that although it's made from plastic only, it's rather stable. But unfortunately, I cannot confirm that because when you place your hand on top of it, it slightly tips over just a tiny little bit but after a while this really gets on your nerves. The Logitech on the other hand is really really stable as if glued to the table. If I really try to move it, it slides a little bit which is still better than tilting and believe me it doesn't tilt at all. The Razer on the other hand as you can see is really wobbly. Some more things about ergonomics. Fixed hardware where you can't adjust or change anything. Here you might also think that but you can remove the wrist pad and under it you have holes for two different settings. One is extremely in the front like this. Then the middle finger ends exactly at the key which is usually used for running. However, it is harder to reach the lowest row of keys. You have to cramp your hand a little to reach it. Therefore, you can also adjust it for bigger hands. That's how I had it the whole time. It's a bit bigger like this. Unfortunately, it seems like they have designed this for giant hands or I don't know. Because here there's a button for your thumb which is similar to the space bar and I would say that 90% of gamers will use it for jumping. In normal use you can hardly reach it. You can certainly try to get a, get a better movement radius by stretching your thumb 10 minutes every day but who wants to do that? I took it into consideration for a second but dropped the idea then. Like I said, that's this for ergonomics. Here it's quite alright. Like this is how the hand would be during gaming. You can easily reach the small joystick but the extra key below is a little harder to reach. But here you have a big key for the pointer finger which is very flexible. Same thing for the middle finger. According to my good old typing teacher, the pointer, no, the middle finger, no, the pinky, is the second most flexible th finger thumb that counted. And like I said, this one can slightly be adjusted, this one not at all. Features are 
very similar. So I will just start with a razor. The obvious feature is ergonomics. It has 16 keys, one joystick at the side. There you can see it. And on their website, they call it an eight-way directional thumb pad, but I will tell you more later about that. And very cool here, the scroll wheel. This is really not to be underestimated as when it comes to software, there are eight different key maps between which you can change with a pre-selected key. Let me check if it's this that I picked. No, not. Then the light would change here and you can save 20 different game profiles. It is backlit in an elegant blue, but the color cannot be changed. The LEDs here are also red and green and yellow. And on the important keys here where you run backwards, it has raised bars like on the home keys of a normal keyboard. These are actually the standard features which are also on the website. The Logitech G13 has 26 and uh, 25 programmable keys. Here, the 22 G keys, the big area here. Then you also have the two thumb keys and the joystick key. But actually I would leave that out because it's really hard to actually press it and not push it forward or backward so I wouldn't configure it. Another thing on the feature list is here the four-way joystick. I can't see where there's eight ways here. The driver only allows you to configure four ways so I guess it's a four-way joystick. It feels analog, but I can't really prove whether it's really analog. I didn't notice it. I just configured it as a normal key. There is no documentation on how many different configuration possibilities it has. I think it's infinite. And for each configuration, you have three profiles. You can switch between these with the M keys here. I'm doing it. Hold on. Also, the color changes a bit. This you can also select. The backlight color is not only blue, as you see yourself, also red. You can also read this on the website. You can choose that individually. I'll show it briefly, but for this I will turn off the light. Here's a green, a red, a yellow, and for the ladies, ah, it's probably hard to see this because it's really bright. I'll, I'll try. Ah, I'll turn the light back on. Ah, no, doesn't work. Sorry, it's a really bad pink. Well, whoever likes it, I, I do, but it's for free, and so of course you don't say no. Mm, well, yeah, as I said, the backlight can be said individually. The most awesome feature is the display here, monochrome, but adjusts to the backlight. There you can run information like the CPU usage or RSS feeds or emails, mailbox, chat software, etc. The SDK, that is the Software Development Kit, is open, so you can play around with it freely. As far as I know, Fraps also works so that you see the frames and whether it's recording or not, but I haven't done more research on this yet. When it comes to finding the right keys, they don't have raised bars, but the four probably WASD keys have a little recess, which is quite all right. You find the key pretty fast with this. Well, yeah, that's the hardware. Like I said, I've both tested for one week. The Razer really rocks, though it's basically for gaming only. And I hate that I can't reach this big key there. This really upsets me. Because then you could use the small thumb key here for Control or Alt to have a double configuration fast. But I configured it for jumping now because 
I can reach it and I jump around way more often than I would want to switch to another config. And it's wobbly and it's not high-end hardware. Here you're really aware of the plastic. The Logitech could also be used in a regular office. It really looks good. And I also tested it with a configuration with different softwares. For example, that you have one key for save, one for save as, mark all, delete, and what else you need for the most softwares. The hotkeys are designed for US layout. This means that you always need two hands for control J or similar combinations. With two hands, I mean, you definitely need the left hand, but you could also use the right hand for control J, but the right hand should stay on the mouse, I think. So if you work a lot with, for example, GIMP, this might be a real good recommendation as well. But I'm still not sure which one I should keep. When it comes to software, people like complaining about Logitech software because they are rather ragged. I've only come across the old set point for the MX518 mouse. This is, uh, that's stuck. I can't show you. It's this, it's this one. But I was already really happy with the software for this G700. And so the driver or the software for the for the G13 is really awesome. What's been improved over the last years. There's a little quick guide video tutorial and it's really impressive what you can do with this thing. I also messed some things up, but this wasn't the fall of, fault of the software, but but was mine. The Razer software, maybe I blended it, is also gaming typical. It really looks nice. It's quite well arranged. You can easily switch between the different key maps. It's not bad, but not as good as the Logitech software. Well, like I said, if you're spoiled for choice, if you're gaming only with rather big hands and if you're not as bullheaded as I am, you should take the razor, especially because of the mouse wheel. The wheel is actually not the mouse wheel. You can configure it as mouse wheel, but don't have to. It's really good for next target, previous target, instead of tap, with which you only can go in one direction. With a wheel, you can go in both. Oh, and on size and hand, I prepared a then a five sheet of paper so that you can see the size of my hand, something like medium small, I would say. It's too small for the razor, I think, but perfect for the G13, where I really can reach everything easily. Like I said, 60 euro, 70 euro. Here, the hardware feels better. It feels more high-end and it looks really good. Oh, this just clattered. Don't know why. Well, it's gummed. You can lick it if it slides around too much. This one's cheaper plastic. Big plus for ergonomics. You can adjust it a little bit. I don't know. I don't know. I'm so not sure. It seems that I cannot make a clear statement here. I'm tending towards the Logitech because it's more stylish or something. Or because of the display, you can switch around fast up here. For example, normal gaming, PvP. Here you always have to remember which lamp is on at the moment. In addition, the LCD tells you what you've just done. For example, I just pressed a key and it can be read here. I will have to return one of the two tomorrow, which means that I will keep this one for sure and this one maybe. I know you don't need to, but ah, this is also so nice. I know that I probably didn't help anybody, but anyway, Bye-bye.